So this is my reflection on the value of that tradition uh, and uh, seeing it as something to really respect and then this sense of gratitude arises. You feel I have an enormous sense of gratitude to the Buddha, the Gautama the Buddha, the one who established uh, this uh, teaching and the Vinaya. So when I think of the Buddha, you know, I do feel in uh, this gratitude, a sense of piti, as they say, or rapture, a really good feeling, you know, in, in, that comes not through, it's not about being happy because I get something, it's just a sense of, of uh, a lovely sense of gratitude and joy at having been one who, who has this opportunity to live this way at this time because say living as a Buddhist alms mendicant in England was never part of my social and cultural expectation it was the most kind of impossible thing to think about I never once thought I'd be living as an alms mendicant in England for so long <laughs> and yet this is what's happened and, uh, and this is what, where the, the kind of practice of the Dhamma <coughs> and the life kind of, you, you have to flow with it. You can't, you just can't try to arrange it and, and uh, according to your own, on your own terms. It's a matter of, of relinquishing, letting go, trusting. Before I went to England, I began to get a lot of anxiety about going to live in, uh, in, uh, in England, for example, because Thailand's very easy, you know, the, to be a bhikkhu and the culture and the people and everything. You, you can take everything for granted there. It's very easy, you know, wherever you go in Thailand, people know what to do. And, and so that's where I, and in India I could survive because they still respect uh, the sadhu or the religious uh, mendicant. It's still possible to live as an alms mendicant in India. But in England, I didn't know, you know having ever lived there. And uh, what would happen, you know, if it didn't, I can't have money, um, uh, you know, how am I going to get on in life, you know, living in a very materialistic country uh, that don't, you know, may not have any interest or even may feel very hostile to somebody uh, in a robe like this. And so I went to Ajahn Chah before the time came to go to England and I asked him, I said, you know, I, I really wonder if I could actually survive for very long in England as an alms mendicant, you know, keeping the vinaya like we do here. I just, you know, I just have grave doubts about it. And so, Lumpur Chah said something to me that really impressed me. He said, uh, you mean there, there are no kind people in England? <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, well, I'm sure there are. And, and then he said, well, and go, go there. <laughs> and he didn't say Buddhists either. He said kind people. You know, that, that struck me because I had a much more cynical attitude about the nature of humanity. You know, my attitude is that basically we're selfish and uh, that's what, you know, our true nature is selfish. Lumpur Cha's attitude is that we're basically good. And, uh, and since he was the, a wise person, I, that kind of changed my, you know, I thought, you know, that's a better way of looking at humanity than the way I looked at it, you know, it's basically selfish. And so, <clears throat> then going to live in England, uh, I remember that people basically good, and that's what I've found in, in the reality of living as a bhikkhu, as a Buddhist monk in, in the UK, and in Europe in general. Well, that uh, is uh, something to contemplate, you know, in, and then this sense of gratitude arises and, uh, and a faith, confidence in practice of uh, Dhamma 
And in the wisdom that the Buddha, the original Buddha, Gautama the Buddha, in which he could, you know, so well establish a conventional form that could last this long. You know, that takes wisdom to be able to, to uh, you know, to, you know, to see how to establish something, a, 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 con a religious convention and a teaching that is incorruptible. You know, like the Four Noble Truths. That's, that's, uh, that's never been corrupted uh, by anybody in 2,552 years. It's just the same, same Noble Truths that he gave his five friends in Saranath 2,500 years ago. And then, uh, and then the uh, uh, monastic order has survived uh, through this period of time. Uh, up to the present time now, it appears in countries like the uh, United States, Canada, in, Western, in European countries. Not only Western Europe, but e uh, European Union now. Western Europe's uh, is no longer politically correct. <laughs> European Union, and uh, in countries all over the world, I get, I've been invited to Russia several times and given meditation retreats in Moscow and St. Petersburg, and been invited so many places that I can't possibly meet all the invitations because I haven't learned how to to appear in two places at the same moment. <laughs> that I can't do. <clears throat> but within the limitations that I find myself, I, I, I uh, you know, I try to meet the, the needs and the interest uh, that is generated all over the world. And then with the media at this time, uh, the mass media, there's, there's no longer a dearth of information and uh, you know, scriptural information or commentarial information on various forms of Buddhism. In the UK, almost every possible form of traditional Buddhism, of Mahayana, Theravada, Tibetan Buddhism, as well as all kinds of modern forms of Buddhism. You know, different uh, organizations design their own Buddhism in their own way. So there's all kinds of modern adaptations uh, to Buddhism in, in, in the UK as well as traditional forms. So uh, there's, uh, this was not existent 50 years ago. This was not possible uh, and uh, say 50 years ago in either the UK or the uh, United States. So it's very heartwarming to see the amount of interest here in in Malaysia, uh, because this I didn't see anything of this when I lived here 45 years ago in in Sabah. Uh, you know, it wasn't I, I didn't have any inkling that anything like this meeting would happen. Ajahn Chah celebration day in Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> I would never have conceived that as being possible. And so now, where we go with the amount of interest here in Penang and various other places in Malaysia, uh, uh, the monk people who ha see the value and the, and the wisdom behind it, and who have a, a willingness to listen, to study, to practice, this I want to encourage and uh, and assure you, this is a very good direction to take, both for personal ways of solving problems and difficulties within your own life as well as generating uh, good qualities in the society that we're living in. Because here in Malaysia we want to be good citizens and not cause divisions and, and uh, problems and to be divisive within this society but to be a force for harmony and goodness uh, generosity within this lovely country of Malaysia. So I'll, I'll leave this with you as a reflection for your consideration and uh, I'd express my gratitude to 
all of those who have uh, so well organized this event and uh, feel very honored that to be invited to, to participate. Thank you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.